lowered the age, then I wouldn't feel in any kind of mind or wouldn't feel the necessary, like, I wouldn't feel like I have to break the rule because I like to break rules and I don't want to feel like I have to. I just, you know, if it's already there for me to do, then I probably won't do it as much. Well, I mean, I hear that you, um, you don't, from what I, from what I gathered was, um, you don't want to fix, I mean, you don't you want to reduce the age because you believe that people are just going to do it anyway. And you also want to focus on more important things. Now, if people are going to do it anyway, I mean, that's a lot of things. I mean, uh, why, why outlaw lots of things like drug usage and uh, speeding? People are going to do it anyway. So why would, should we, uh, let's, let's just raise the speed limits and uh, legalize drugs as well. I mean, I mean, that's kind of a radical thought process, but to me they go hand in hand. There's issues regarding, there's detrimental issues regarding underage drinking. And whether, I mean, wh whether it be drugs, speeding, or underage drinking, they're all detrimental and hurtful to society. They all cause deaths, and they're all, I mean, ultimately harmful. So, I mean, fake IDs, other things that, yeah, I mean, that, that's all problems with it. But the bigger problem is um, people becoming, um, having brain damage in the future, not fully developing. Um, I mean, it, they're, all, they're all issues, but the fact of the matter is, is there's a bigger issue at hand. Underage drinking causes death and health issues. Now also, I heard you say contributing to minors. Now, if it was, if there's 18 year olds, they can drink now. So what's to stop their 17 year old buddies from asking them to support them alcohol? So if you're 18, 19, 20, 21, that's three years difference. So subtract three years from 18, 15 year old kids. All your uh, freshmen or sophomore friends in school, they, now they, they have it. That's even a younger age. So, I, again, I, I mean, just that being said, I, I, I kind of uh, feel that there, there's a little liberal viewpoint there, and the fact of the matter remains that it is detrimental for those reasons. Well, see, if they lowered it, because at 18, you, you're you graduating high school, you're going to college, okay? The whole contributing to minors thing is you know, you join a frat, you join a sorority, etc. You know, y'all have parties, whether it's allowed or not with your frat or your sorority, there's gonna be alcohol there. Some way, somehow, it's gonna get there. And so, like in that kind of example, you know, you're in college and you're just, you're trying to figure everything out. You're out on your own, you're making your own decisions and everything. And so, if there is 18 year olds there versus, you know, 21, 22, 23 year olds, you know, then that's going to be a big contributing to minors there because whether, you know, whether you're drinking it or not, because I've actually gotten in trouble for that also. I have, I was in a situation where I was with people that were 21, 22, 23 year old, 23, and I wasn't drinking at all. And they told me that I could still go to court and still get in trouble for not drinking anything, whether, even though it was still in my reach. And so if you're in your college situation, then you can get in even more trouble just because you're around 21 year olds, 22 year olds and everything like that. And so that's why we say, you know, you should lower it to the age of 18, not lower it to the age of 16 or 15 and all that, because that's, you know, you're still in high school, you're still in the environment where you're still living with your parents, you still have, you know, your family, you're still at your home, but when you're 18, you're up and out and you're moving on with your life. And so therefore you should be able to drink because if you can vote, you can, you know, get in the army, you have the ability to hold a gun, et cetera, then why not, you know, if you're gonna be treated like an adult, then you should be able to act like an adult also. Well, speaking of um, uh, students in college and, and fraternities and, and whatnot, um, there's an estimated of 17,000 college students between the age of 18 and 24 die each year from alcohol-related alcohol injuries. <clears throat> um, as well as 6,000 students are injured, injured while under the influence of, <clears throat> of alcohol. Um, there, there's statistics um, going on and on about the, the numerous amounts of death and injuries and on top of the monetary impacts of, of underage uh, drinkers between the age of 18 and 21. Um, each year, 
Uh, in, well, in 2005, there was an estimated of $60.3 billion in mon monetary impact just from underage drinking. Um, and, and that also contributing for, uh, youth violence, traffic crashes, property claims, youth injuries, uh, poisoning and psychotics, uh, and as well as medical costs. That's a good point, but basically if what we're trying to do is, you're saying from 18 to 24 year olds, there's all these costs. If we lower the age to 18, these kids can now have the option to talk to their parents. If only one kid out of every 10 crashes that well, all these costs came from, if only one kid called their parents and their parents came to pick them up, imagine the impact that would have. Yes, there's still gonna be kids out there drinking and driving, it's gonna happen. But if we could change this to where kids feel more comfortable to talk to their parents, if people, if kids, there's gonna be more designated drivers because they don't feel the need to have to drink all the time. If you're 18 years old, you're already at drinking age, it's legal, you're not gonna to wanna to get drunk every single night of the week, like as if kids that are just trying to drink and get that binge in. And if you, we could take down some of that cost, we could take down so much of it alone just by if one in every 10, 15 kids that gets in these car crashes decide to call their parents or had a designated driver or change that, we could save so much more money and save some of those lives. I understand the concept of saving lives and um, reducing the uh, monetary impact on things. However, how many um, 21 and up people are always going into the bar and calling their parents to drive them home? I mean, yeah, you can call a cab or do that. You, you do have the option to call somebody when you're drinking and driving. However, I work at a bar, and the majority of people that leave are leaving with their own keys in their hand. Now, what's to, what's to say that uh, 18, 19, 20-year-olds are going to make those better decisions, especially because they have zero experience in drinking? You get your, uh, you get your ID. I mean, now you can vote. Now you can, um, you know, join the military so, okay well yeah you can do all that but it doesn't change the fact that you're going to make appropriate decisions just because you're an adult because all the adults make the inappropriate decisions as well but the only downside to that is is these guys from 18 to 20 are still lacking the essential knowledge like i said before they're not even fully developed to even comprehend and have proper reasoning so drunken improper reasoning is a double negative it's even worse now also, um, one thing I wanted to say to get away from that is that um, um, the topic of joining the military. I mean, yeah, if everybody says if you can die for your own country, you should be able to drink, you should be able to have a beer or two. And I feel there's a negative behind that as well because uh, I can speak from experience on this topic because uh, at the age of eight, uh, 19, I joined the Marine Corps. And um, just because somebody can um, join and fight and die for the country still doesn't mean they're a uh, full-fledged adult. They're, they still have nimble minds. I mean, they're just easier to mold at that time. That's why they do try and recruit people so young. And furthermore, um, like I've seen, I've seen countless events of ridiculously irresponsible things happening in the barracks. I lived in the barracks for several years, and uh, if you just think about it, you mix alcohol with a bunch of uh, hardened, trained, fearless, basic, basic killers or uh, combat veterans, experienced combat veterans, um, put them all in one spot. I'll say that for one thing, they uh, you they don't have anything on college students at that point in time. You, you see some ridiculous things, and guess what? They're all under the age, and they're all doing r ridiculous things, including myself. I did as well, you know. And uh, that's why I also feel so strongly against it because I know at that time, I was like, man, I'm, uh, eight, I'm 19 years old, I'm in the Marine Corps, I should be able to have a drink. Society just doesn't know. Now that I'm a little older, I've realized, man, it's probably a good thing. And then one other thing I wanna hit on that point is that, um, or two, two more things, I'm sorry. Um, the effect on alcohol would also, uh, in, in uh, be a de bit detrimental on uh, things like military training. It'd be catastrophic. Um, think about it. If uh, you, you know, 18 year old, you lance corporal or whatever, he goes out, gets off of work one day, had a hard day in the field. All right, he goes have a beer, drink a couple more beers, and ultimately he gets kind of 
drunk, wakes up the next morning hungover, and go 